What's up, guys? It's your boy, A.A. Ron, and I'm being joined by the one and the only... I'm Ian. How's it going? <coughs> a little fun fact and side note. Ian, this is his first vlog he's ever shot. Mm -hmm. So, big round of applause to him for the nobody that's watching this video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. But, um, yeah, so this video's gonna cover basically what goes down at boot camp. The raw, uncut, no BS, like, this is what to expect for those of you that are going to be going through it or just anyone that wants to know just in general. Um, we're going to start off with the receiving night, this is the night you get there. So what was yours like? We were tired, you know. They shuffle you in, they make you buy all your stuff, and then uh, you're not allowed to sleep. For 36 hours straight, you will be awake. They, you, eat, you start to sleep and start, you know, leaning or whatever, you get yelled at. Uh, yeah, just don't fall asleep, otherwise you're going to have a bad time pretty much yeah it's pretty rough like their their whole goal is to make you uh, just pretty much stressed out and uncomfortable they want you to be as uncomfortable as possible like as soon as you're going to get your uh, your knit deliver like uh, your uh, what was it uh, ditty bag, bag yeah. issue your ditty bag issue where you're gonna get all your stuff and your skivvies god I hate skivvies <laughs> but as soon as you go to get all your stuff they're gonna line you in this hallway and they're gonna say heel to toe so literally you're freaking you're gonna be like this like feet to feet like your feet will be touching someone else's feet the person behind you will be touching your feet and you're just just so uncomfortable and they leave you there for like what at least an hour at least an hour at least an hour easily and you're gonna go get that issued you're gonna go you're just it's it's crazy you're just running back and forth they they're having they're even having recruits i remember recruits that just got there like an hour before they're helping the the receiving uh recruit division commanders pretty much run receiving so it's like it's hectic. You're gonna go and you're gonna get your uh, eagle card and all that, and then they're gonna take you three, to go. Three hundred dollars, right there. Yeah, and they're gonna take you to go get some stuff. It was a hundred dollars or one hundred fifty. It was three three hundred on the eagle card. No, I got one fifty. You got one fifty. I, I got, got three hundred. No, I got one fifty. I got three hundred. I, I, I got screwed. So yeah, you're gonna go get all your stuff, and then um, basically from there, P days is gonna kick off. You want to talk about P days? Actually, how about how about a, what was something funny or something crazy you saw during receiving? During receiving. Um, is one dude, he, he came out of the bus a little too quickly. He started running all the way down the middle of the thing. The uh, petty officer was there. She nearly screamed her ass off at him. I mean, I thought the man was about to just drop right there and just they were going to make him do 10 counts or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he went off to a room and I never saw him again. I don't know if he got like <laughs> held back, he, like shot out a little bit. I never saw that man again. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, for those of you that are wondering, no, like right out of the gate, they can't start like making you do like exercises or anything because you're not fully medically cleared. So you can't you can't be punished with PT or anything like that until you're fully medically cure, uh, cleared and then you're out of uh, P days, which is like like oh like a full at least a full week. It's not a week, yeah. It's terrible. You're gonna be up for like four four days straight. Yeah, they, you only get days. like three four hours of sleep a night. It's really not it's not fun that, at all. That first night, that first night, you finally make it to your uh, your your ship or at least your compartment, which is still in the same building. It's gonna be rough because you're gonna get like a 12 second shower and then it's just you you guys are not even the team yet So you don't really have a system of working things out like you'll eventually find your own way like our division We would have one half of the compartment go shower while the other half cleaned So we would we would take our 50 minutes. We had to shower and hygiene and all that we would split it up So that, that's how we roll with it But um something crazy that I saw in receiving there was this kid uh, <laughs> that um they started, they started yelling at, and they're like, what are you doing? Get back here. He's like, no. He started walking through the door. You remember this? I do remember that, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is the funniest thing ever. So all the, all the RDCs are like, hey, you get, get your ass back over here. And they're all yelling at him, and it's all crazy. He's like, no. And they're like, where are you going to go, huh? He's, walk, he's literally walking through the door, the door we just came in. <laughs> they're like, where are you going to go? He's like, I'm going home. He's like opening the door. So the the main chief, he's like, you are home. This is your home. And the kid looks the chief in the eye. He goes, no, it ain't. And he walked out the door. Like, I don't know where he went. He probably got arrested. He probably got arrested. But, That's AWOL, yeah. I was there like, ooh. I was like, I love this kid because now they're all going to go kill him and leave us alone. <laughs> It was the craziest thing. So skipping forward, uh, your first week, you're going to have, like, the main thing you have in first week is, like, swim. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah, swim. abandoned ship procedures. Yeah, abandoned ship. So um, for those of you that kind of looked into it, they, they say, like, stare at the flag, if you know anything about that. Basically, you're going to go and you're going to climb up to this top ledge, and there's a big American flag in the background. If you're like me, 
terrified to death of heights. Stare at the flag and don't do what I did. I got up to the chief and I looked down and I freaked out and I panicked. And I said, oh, shit. But I said it out loud. Like, I was thinking it, but I said it out loud. And the chief was like, shut the fuck up. And I, chief. And then, like, he, so he'll get you to the ledge to where your toes are just off the tip. And you're freaking out. Like, look, I'm even shaking right there. And then he kind of, he doesn't push you. He, like, guides you. He just gives you that little nudge that you need. Yeah, like, uh, if, if it looks like your head is about to, like, clip the, uh, edge, of the edge of the platform, then, yeah, they're going to, like, give you a little more of a push. But yeah. uh, if, you, if you're kind of clear, they won't, they'll just kind of. Gently touch you off. Assist you. Yeah, gently assist you. <laughs> I actually asked. I you, shouldn't laugh. It sounds like it's good. they're gonna push you, but they don't. They, yeah, don't, they don't push don't. you. I actually asked I the. Uh, I asked the chief if I could do a flip off of the uh, platform and all. <laughs> you were the one that did that. I, I was the one. I was the guy who did that. <laughs> Like, they yelled at you for that. They did, yeah. They were like, who the fuck do you think you are? We were doing abandoned ship. You don't abandon ship by doing a flip off. Oh, that was during abandoned ship. Yeah, it was during abandoned ship. All right, so those of you that are, that are confused, so you're going to climb up to the top of this thing, you're going to jump off, and then you got to do uh, one of four survival strokes. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like this, or a backstroke, or the seal. Yeah, they were like, fucking making me stuff. keep my face in the water the whole time. I felt like I was it's about to hard. Drown. It's hard to find a way to do it because you don't have, you don't have iPro or anything, so you're kind of just running into everybody and they'll pull you out of the pool but don't don't be stressed and and for those of you that can't swim don't be stressed at all because yeah, and, pull aside and, and our, you well, not even that they'll teach you how to swim you can go to boot camp and not know how to swim it's perfectly fine there are plenty of people that come to boot camp not prepared that we literally we had our we had it's in the first week right boot camp is about nine weeks eight to nine weeks people will say eight weeks they don't count p days with p days boot camp is like nine weeks Flies by super fast, easy peasy. But this one kid, he finally passed his swim. Like it was like six days, six days before graduation. So if you can't swim, don't freak out. You got you got plenty of time. Like you'll you'll pass it, unless you're just not getting it and you're not a fish. But it'll be fine. They'll teach you to be a fish. You'll be good to go. So you have that first jump, which I conquered my fears. I was like good to go. Then they pull you out of the pool after you're done with your swim, and they're like, go down there. Cut right. So you go down there and you cut right, and you're looking at this this wall. It's it's like a memorabilia. It's like just all in remembrance of uh, these seals that gave their lives while performing their operations and things like that, and all special warfare people. <coughs> and then um, you look up, and you got to jump off of another friggin' eleven foot <laughs> platform, and then you got to go and you have to get inside this raft. It's to simulate like your ship has gone down and you're. Mustering, you have to activate the thing in the pool. They do all that. Don't worry about any of that. But swim is easy peasy. Um, what would you say going into week two or ahead from that would be? Um, it gets a little tougher because that's when you're still getting all your uniform items and stuff. They're gonna teach you how to wear everything, teach you how to pro how to properly stow for boot camp. So you, you're never gonna fold them the same way after that. But like that's the way they want you to make sure you're doing it right because uh, that's when you start getting inspections by FQA, Fleet Quality Assurance. They're gonna come in and start popping racks. They're gonna look at your towels and all that. <laughs> if shit is out of uh, out of order and stuff, they're gonna give you a demerit ship. And uh, if it's really messed up, it's gonna be a compartment demerit ship. That's worth a lot more than uh, or just a regular demerit ship. So you know you gotta make sure all your stuff's just squared away so that nothing you know nothing bad happens. Because your RDCs will get angry if you get a compartment hit. They're always angry. They're gonna beat you all. Probably put a uh, yellow or orange card. That uh, they used to beat the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you there's two types of people in boot camp. There's smart people and there's strong people. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a really really strong person, get the merit shits because not only does that hurt your personal score, it also affects your divisional score. And those the de those department hits and personal hits, they add up. They really do, and they really hurt your score in the long run. Yeah, we were... So I want to minimize that. Yeah, during our last week of boot camp, we were <coughs> top to get uh, Battle League, which is the like ultimate divisional achievement that you can get if you have the best score. Uh, we Everything was perfect with us. We were on the top. Then we got one uh, compartment hit right now, or like two days right before graduation. Mm. And stuff. We plummeted all the way down to third, and we, we lost our Battle League. We went to fucking 426. And... Oh my gosh, our chief was not happy with they us. They just barely beat they us. They barely beat all of us. I mean, yeah. We were different divisions. It yeah. sounds like we're in the same. Yeah, it was 425, four, I was 427. Four, but um, yeah, it really sucked because we put a lot of time and energy into being a good division. And then, you know, it, it was a really petty thing too. It was because our uh, 
rover log wasn't on top of the uh, the shelf where it's supposed to be. It was on top of the mailbox right below the shelf. So, I mean, they found literally nothing wrong with our compartment besides that one little thing. But, yeah. you know, they, they're petty. You know? they, they, get, they look for anything they can have. But there's, there's, there's a reason you have to do all the little petty things. Because, uh, like our chief explained to us, he's like, they were flying over Afghanistan running a secret mission or some type of deal. And you have to pay, boot camp is all about, and I can't stress this enough, attention to detail. And I struggled with this a lot personally, but it's all about attention to detail. You're going to hear that. They're going to pound that into the sand. Like It's all you're going to hear. Attention to detail, attention to detail, attention to detail. And they were, they were flying and <clears throat> something as simple as forgetting a wrench. Someone was working on the engine while they were flying doing reconnaissance over Afghanistan. Something as simple as forgetting a wrench and not putting it back in your toolbox, leaving it there, almost catching the engine on fire is where our chief explained to us is what happened. And they caught it before the engine caught on fire. And he said, you know, such a simple little thing, so tedious, but that could have caused their bird to go down and crash in Afghanistan. That could have caused them to get captured, possibly by ISIS or whoever. And he explained right. to us, he explained to us what happens to military members that get caught by ISIS. Mm -hmm. And it's not pretty. And it involves being in the desert, them holding a dull machete knife wow. to your neck. And it's, that's, that's what it's all oriented towards. It's, it's like all combat and things like that. It's to really get you to pay attention because the little things, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can't do the little things correctly, you can't do the big things. So that's what they, they strive to pound into your skull every day <laughs> but um uh, I, I'm just gonna kick into like advice for anyone that's going to Navy boot camp or planning on it advice <coughs> training guide for your tests your answers are in your book even in the little pre-tests that they have in there know those questions you're gonna you're gonna be able to pass at least pretty decently like I, I barely even studied and I was able to pass and I would just memorize a couple of the questions You'll be good to go. You don't really need to like read the chapters. I would read the chapters. Know as much as you can. Because I didn't know this, but more information you know, the better you score. There's rewards for it. Some people got ribbons. So instead of leaving boot camp with two ribbons, leave with three. And that ribbon, that third ribbon, or actually there's a couple you can earn, but either way, that third specific ribbon you can earn for whatever category, that's the only time you can ever earn that ribbon. So my opportunity of earning the academic ribbon or anything like that, I can never earn that ribbon ever again. Unless I go through boot camp again, which <laughs> I can't. I'm already a sailor, unfortunately. But You're an airman, not a sailor. Well, I'm still a sailor. I'm an airman, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into to our school. We're at school now, finally, but um, we'll, we'll tackle that in the next video. But uh, so advice. So <coughs> your training guide, know that thing. Front and back. This is it right here. I still even got mine. Look, I'm a scrub. This this is what it's gonna look like right here. Training guide. Yeah, literally the answers to every single test. It's the little mini quizzes. It's gonna have all your look, chain of command, all your stuff. You're gonna need to know all this and how to say all of these. <coughs> and they're gonna like so and it even gets into like watch standing. So you so you're standing watch, a chief petty officer walks in, you're gonna salute, and you're gonna say uh, greeting of the day. Good morning, Chief. Seaman Recruit Pereira, Division 425, Security Watch or Security Roving Watch, whatever you are. Standing by for further instruction, Chief. Then they're going to ask you an academic question. Or if it's FQA, especially. You want to know FQA you want to know your crap for FQA. Yeah, FQA will, is, you can guarantee they're going to ask you something. With your chiefs and petty officers, I mean, it's 50-50. It's, it's really depending on how they're feeling and how they generally are. It's like... <laughs> and the, the the higher up you go in phase, the harder the questions get. Like and they'll ask you multiple questions, and if it's FQA, you miss one question, the merit shit. And they'll go and check your logbook. If anything is messed up, you forgot a freaking period, the merit shit. Then they're gonna go inspect your entire compartment. The head's screwed up, laundry screwed up. There's a couple racks that the pillows aren't exactly where they need to be, or edged up, or the zipper's not down, facing inboard or whatever. Boom, 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 boom. Now you got all these department or you got all these demerit shits plus a compartment hit. Your freaking score is just it's devastating in a matter of five minutes. And your RECs come back and they see all those on their desk. Mm. They, they, they're not happy. <laughs> put it like that. It was the first one that got that first demerit shit. You sitting there standing watch. I remember our uh, our ship LCPO the uh, 
a senior chief Schlittler came in and he asked me, and it was as soon as we hit phase three, as soon as we hit phase three, he goes, I did the whole nine yards, and he goes, who was the last fleet admiral of the United States Navy? Mm. And I was like, that's not in the training guide. I was like, what? And the last question is like, what does the USN stand for on a gold fouled anchor? And it's not United States Navy. Uh-huh. It's not. Yeah, what's See? <laughs> See? What does it stand for? It doesn't stand... Okay, so USN on the gold fouled anchor stands for Unity Service Navigation. Seriously? See? They would ask him that. Yeah. And he would have said United States Navy, the merit ship yeah. right there. So you like, merit ship me, yeah. <laughs> like, you gotta, like, I didn't know that. There was a chief that came in and asked one of our guys that was standing mm-hmm. watch. Uh, it was our brother did the chief. Mm-hmm. And she came in and asked him a question. He got it wrong. So when we were doing bases, bases is fun. It's just like, just a super workout. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, all obstacles and stuff and it's baseline. You go from this exercise to the exercise, but regardless. Um, so during bases, I went and I asked her. I was like, what does it stand for? And she looked at me and she smiled and she gave me the answer. And I was like, all right, locked on. Mm-hmm. And then sure enough, another chief came in when I was on watch. Unity service navigation. He was like, all right. But yeah, um, this thing, man, this friggin' little book, See they're going to have you in the friggin' P-Way like this all throughout P-Days, all throughout bull camp, or boot, bull camp, mm-hmm. boot camp, <laughs> bunch of bulls, <laughs> but never mind. But yeah, they're going to have you... Um, Constantly reading this thing, you're gonna be on the tow line, <coughs> standing by to do a PI, a personnel inspection. Oh, you got 30 seconds. Get out your training guide and study. And you're, well, we got 30 seconds before we even start. By the time I get my training guide out, get it out and study. You're gonna get it out. You're gonna go like this. You're gonna find your page of what you want to study. All right, put them up. You're gonna go put it back in your bag. This thing, I'm telling you, man, read read this friggin' book. This is gonna. This book right here is the difference between an easy time and a hard time at boot camp. Promise you. Promise you. You agree with that? Yep. And make sure you all know the uh, last fleet admiral and the first Mick Pond. Yeah, Mick Pond Smith. Yeah, Mick Pond. No, Black. Oh, Black was I was never Smith. asked that. Yeah, oh. yeah. first Mick Pond was Mick Pond Black. This thing is your Bible, man. It has everything in it. First page, Sailor's Creed. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Sailor's Creed. We're going to go forward a little bit. A couple pages after the index and all that. Boom, your chain of command. You're going to fill this in with your RDCs. You got to know every single you one. You need to know every single one of these. You need to know every single one. Every single one of those. What they wear on the sleeve, their dress with uniform, what they wear as a collar device, what their tape read is. You need to know everything. If you don't, it's not good. And your general orders, your RTC maximum. I will not lie to you or steal. No, tolerate those among us who do. Okay, great. All that. You're going to have recruit handwriting. They're going to teach you what that is. That's going to be logbook stuff. So yeah, like this thing's your Bible, man. It's gonna. That's the difference between easy and hard time. <coughs> Another thing, you will get sick during boot camp. Like, oh, absolutely. Everybody, everybody, everybody will get everybody sick. Everybody's sick. I still have the uh, the boot I still camp have my cough. cough. Yeah, we yeah. Have the boot camp cough. Still have the cough. Yeah, there's, there's gonna be some uh, cough going around boot camp. No one, it, no one knows who actually like started the cough, but it, it's always there. It just goes around. Um, <coughs> yep, there it is. Um, <laughs> Boot camp cough, you're probably gonna get some sort of congestion. Uh, pink eye, that's that goes around. Um, oh yeah, make sure y'all are washing your feet and stuff too, because foot sanitize and mouth, your hands yeah. every chance you get. Yeah, foot sanitize, and sanitize. Yeah, foot and mouth is a big thing there. If you get, uh, if you get foot and mouth and stuff, you're gonna be put into isolation for a little bit, so until it goes away. So it, it's it's not fun. So just and it sucks sure. for the other people because they're gonna they're gonna take you out of your compartment and put you in some other division's compartment. Like they did to ours. Every single sick person they, they put in our, our compartment mm-hmm. slept right next to me. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't wear their freaking mask. They're breathing and coughing towards me. Oh, dude. Oh, all boot camp. I was like, I swear if I catch this crap, mm-hmm. it was annoying. Um, I know some people are going to be worried about like wisdom teeth removal. Yo, I've had, personally, I've had nothing but terrible dental experiences in the past. Absolutely terrible. I'm terrified of dentists. I have no problem. No problem getting my teeth worked on there. They, they numb you up. They're courteous, professional. I freaked out even for tooth removal. It's not bad. It is not bad. You're not going to feel a thing. They numb the crap out of you. Don't listen to what all these other people tell you about, oh, it was this bad, or all they give you is ibuprofen. Yeah, they give you ibuprofen, but the freaking dosage amount. <laughs> Yo, like, I honestly, I'm going to tell you this right now. I... I didn't need it. I didn't need a single ibuprofen after I got my teeth removed. I got these two on my left removed. 
top and bottom. And just because you have wisdom teeth, I'm gonna tell you this, this is straight facts. Just because you have wisdom teeth does not mean they are being removed. They have to be impacted and they have to be screwing up the rest of your mouth. So mine were pointed in like this, pushing my other teeth. My bottom one was causing my other teeth that I was touching to get a cavity. It has to be something like that where it's gonna cause damage to your mouth for them to go in there and remove them. Because if they're gonna grow in straight and they're not gonna cause a problem, why remove it? Yeah. Um, you wanna cover the shock? Oh yeah, so you're gonna get at least 10, 15 <coughs> during P days and all that. They don't really hurt. No, nah, they don't really hurt. There was one though. I don't know what it, which one it was. They stuck me, right, stuck mm -hmm. right in the arm. It was a, one of the The thicker, little fat, the little fatty part right here. Yeah, the little fatty arm. And it stung my, a little bit. It stung a little bit, but it made my whole arm go numb for pretty much the rest of the day. Um, yeah, a bunch of arm shots. And then there's the peanut butter, peanut butter shot at the end. You go into the next room, you sit down on one of the medical stretchers. And then it's just, I, mean, I mean, it's really not that bad, honestly. It's kind of exaggerated by a lot of people. It's not, it's not a very big needle. And uh, I mean, it's just quick jab. Which they stick the stuff in and then it's, it's out again. I'm gonna be 100% honest. The peanut butter shot, the needle itself, it does not hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it does you, not hurt. Yeah, but you will feel the little glob of penicillin, you know, in your butt. Uh, pretty it sure. just makes you numb. Yeah, that's the only part that kind of hurts because it has it has just like this weird friggin' effect on your body, mm -hmm. and all it does it. You're hey, trust me, you're gonna want that. You're gonna want that peanut butter shot. You absolutely want it. Mm -hmm. When we went for our second series of shots. I wanted a second peanut butter shot because I was so friggin' sick and I wanted them to clear me up. They wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. But I feel bad for people that are starting about next year because they're introducing a second peanut butter shot. <laughs> yeah, it just sucks to be them. It's supposed to be but, them. Uh, yeah, the uh, peanut butter shot's going to affect your uh, PT a little bit because that screwed me over on the PFA. I didn't pass it the uh, first time, so I didn't get my uh, $2,000 bonus because of the peanut butter shot. It impacted my running. I was off by about a minute. Yeah, it's like the way they do it is just so inconvenient mm. because you have your, your PFA. Mm. It's just so inconvenient. You're just so screwed up when you go to run. Mm. Yeah, like, but, uh, yeah, and you're, this is uh, how screwed up I was. I went from going, I my first PFA, I had, I had 36 push-ups. I had 42 sit-ups. No, 46. 46 sit-ups. And my run, my run was like, it was like 14.59. No, no, no. 13.59. Yeah, 13.59 run. Now it's failing. So I didn't get my bonus. <coughs> A little bit after that, I got cleared up. I went from 36 push ups to 70 push ups. Then I went to uh, from 40 something to like 80 something sit ups. And then I dropped almost two minutes on my run. So, I mean, the way they do it is just. It's just really inconvenient for you doing your PFA, but you gotta you gotta struggle through it. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of training as soon as I had signed up to, uh, you know, get ready for the PFA, so I, I could make sure I got that bonus. I was really good. I'd gotten like a ten minute mile and a half time. I could do like sixty push ups and a bunch of sit ups and all that. They after all the injections and stuff, I could only do like thirty seven push ups and like for like fifty thirty or so sit ups, and I got a thirteen fifteen mile and a half time. So I was all like, well, I mean, what, what did I do all that training for then? I mean, I still failed. Yeah. So, I mean, like, if if you fail, I mean, it's really not the end of the world. You know, you're, you're still going to move on. The place to fail is boot camp. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah it, I mean, as long as you pass the final one, you're, you're more than fine. But you definitely will because you're as long as you do the PT, the SC mods, and just you just participate in general, you're, you'll be more than fine. You know, don't stop during the sustained runs because they're there to help you get your run times you back down. You push yourself. Yeah, you got to push yourself. That's what happened to one guy during the PF, final PFA. He never took a PT seriously. You know, he would always stop doing the PT whenever Petty Officer or Chief would turn their back on them. They would just kind of lay there, and then when they turned back around, they would start doing it again. Um, they would be constantly stopping during the sustained runs. So, you know, they just never really took the PT seriously. And, you know, as a result, they, they failed the PFA. And, got asthma back four weeks and they had to start all the way back in uh uh three tech right yeah it was yeah three tech yeah so i mean just you know make sure you do what you're doing what you're supposed to do even after boot camp because mm -hmm. there was somebody in a school our, our command master chief was talking to us there's somebody here in a school where we're at now that screwed up and they're making him go back from p one day and redo boot camp from receiving and he was already a sailor so you got to keep like you got to keep all the discipline you learn throughout boot camp. You can't slack off. 
just because uh, we're a school and it's like it's basically like college like this we have yeah we have rules and you know you just gotta like the best way to put it is in the, the military bearing switch you need to know when to turn it on and off and that's yeah. it I mean you got classes just like every other college and all that yeah but you know it's, it's, it's still military you gotta it's okay to have fun sometimes yeah, but you, you know just make sure you're doing what you're doing uh, don't be don't be stupid like I mean they give you a bunch of rules you're probably not gonna remember them all but it's really just common sense stuff you know just remember work comes first and then play comes later yeah, but it's it's nice though, you know. Every you're you're on liberty every afternoon from four to taps, and during the weekends, you know, there's no inspections, and you can you have liberty all day unless you're on duty, and all that. I mean, I mean, it's pretty chill. It's good to compared to boot camp. This place is a resort. But you got to work your way up to that. But uh, Marlin's fight. Yeah, Marlin's fight was dumb. So no, well, I think it served a good purpose. It served a purpose. Yeah, it, it was, served a really good purpose. Yeah, Marlin's spike is. Uh, where you basically <coughs> practice your line handling. You're going to be going... Know in. your line handling and your script that they give you. Know it. I mean, honestly, know you don't it. really need to know the whole script. You just need to know the line captain parts because that's the only... Or those are the only parts where you actually need to know the lines. Literally everything else, you just repeat that down and up the chain of command. The but, more you know, the better, though. It, yeah. it helps. But yeah, Marlon Spike, you know, um, don't violate any of the safety rules, or else that's a that's a casualty on the belt. It goes against your score. Somebody dies. Um, the time itself, it doesn't really matter too much. They just they just don't want you killing anybody. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna give you a time limit. They're gonna say you have twenty five minutes. You have twenty five minutes to get the ship underway, and then back into port. Make it happen. I'm gonna tell you what. They're gonna give you your twenty five minutes or whatever. I want all of you to just listen to me right here. That time limit that they give you. Take it, screw that time limit that they give you, and here's why. What's more important, making it home on time or making it home with everybody alive? That's what they want to stress. No safety violations, you want everybody to stay alive. Yeah, how, many did you, how many safety violations did you get? We had three people die. Yeah, three, we had seven, yeah, because uh, one idiot, he decided to violate the safety rules, he stepped over the anchor chain. That was an immediate seven strikes on the bell. That was five strikes on the bell. Yeah, it was five. Before that, it was just simple stuff. Maybe, you know, not doing hand over hand on the line, <coughs> or you we know, were stepping across the safety lines. It wasn't bad. But as soon as you stepped over that anchor chain, immediate five strikes on that belt. Boot camp and all, it's it's a learning experience. You're gonna falter. You're gonna fail. You will you're fail. fail seriously. And you're gonna fail. But you gotta take that hit. You keep going. You know, toughness. Toughness. Yeah, you'll learn about that from your chaplain when you uh, if, you, if you go. Toughness journal, it, it helps. I didn't, I didn't really like use it. The, the only time I really used it was when our RDCs came out and Chief was like, "Hey, where are my CTIs at?" And no one. Hey, third RDC, where are my DC men at? Really, like no one. And then our second RDC, where are my AOs at? I'm the only one. Yeah, she beat the shit out of me for like two weeks straight. I didn't go to bed clean for like two weeks. She would beat the shit out of me. We would go to chow, come back. We'd shower after shower, she beat the shit out of me, and then I go to bed. I got brand new linen, white, crisp, clean sheets, and overnight, bitches were brown. <laughs> I was so miserable. I remember crying in my rack after like the eighth night. And I, I was telling my rack mate, I just want to go home, dude. I'm so miserable. But you know what? You need to find that freaking mental fortitude, that toughness, and you need to push forward. Because you know what? My the part that really helped me out. I, t I started talking to myself. I'm not crazy, but I started talking to myself, and I was like, you know what? You know how many people have done this before me and paved the way for me? I was like, they can freaking do it. I can freaking do it, too. And I'm going to pave the way for future sailors down the line as well. So that's kind of the conversation I had with myself, and I pushed on through. And I was like, you know what? At some point, she's going to find someone else to beat. Guess what? At some point, she found other people to beat, and I was like, that used to beat me. <laughs> Hey, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, things are going to get super tough. You know, I mean, you're going to get beat. You're going to get yelled at. You're you're going to fail. I mean, it's all boot camp is 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 like it's getting you used to failure. You know, but just you just got to remember. You know, the reward, the end of the rainbow, super worth it. Yes. I mean, coming in, in here to the airport and stuff, I had like 20 people uh, thank me for my service. You know, it was such a weird feeling. I'm it's not very used, weird. I'm not used to it at all but I don't know it just, it just I, I, I enjoyed it a lot you know? getting to walk around the airport and then you kind of have you kind of have a new mindset that mm -hmm. your RDCs have given you that they've instructed you and 
I remember when I was walking through the airport and everybody was thanking me for my service, the few that did, I, I had this little thought. I was like, I'm a part of something extremely, extremely big and extremely important. I'm responsible for protecting these people, whether they know it or not. You know, you're, you're responsible for the, the safety of the country and other countries as well. Not only that, even going to another country, not only do I represent my family, my family name is on my right, but also I represent the United States and the Navy. So you're, you're a representative of America and the Navy. But, I mean, after Marlon's fight, I'm going to cut back to that because we kind of keep going on topic. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> after Marlon's fight, somewhere down the line, after you finish all your calls, battle stations. We're not allowed to talk about battle stations. About that. We're more than happy to talk about it if you guys ever go through battle stations. Once you become a sailor, mm -hmm. then we're allowed to talk about it. But that's something you got to... You want you got to get to. All I say is, it's literally the culmination of everything you learn in training. Every single thing you learn, it'll be in there. Don't fall asleep. Do not fall asleep. No, Big because thing. at the end of the night, you just stay focused. Because at the end of the night, there's something waiting for you, mm -hmm. and it'll be the best thing that's ever happened to you. I promise you. I'll never forget when I was handed my hat. This is his, but I'll it's never forget. Hair. I was never, I'll never forget when I was handed my cap. And then. Yeah, guy next to me, he, yeah. he was just staring at it, you know, kind of crying a little bit. Yeah, it was it's so happy weird. to be dumb. It's a weird feeling mm -hmm. to be labeled sailor. Mm -hmm. And then they go back to yelling at you like you're a recruit. Five yeah. seconds later. <laughs> so that. terrible. I was like, so much for being a sailor. <laughs> but you have to remember, until you hit your next command, you're still in recruit status. So, yeah, just because you're a sailor doesn't mean jack. Yeah. If you're going to be if you're gonna be a shitbag, you are going to, yeah, you're going to get that yellow card you're gonna get that work regardless because you're still in recruit status but yeah there's probably gonna be like one guy in your compartment he's gonna start a rumor that once you graduate uh boot camp and stuff you get promoted up to e2 wrong yeah i mean you would think it's like it's it is a thing you know because you're not a recruit anymore you'd be like an actual sailor no you gotta it's it's nine months to promote up to e2 from e1 and <coughs> I actually fell for that and started passing it along too. Like, oh no, guys, we're gonna be E two once we graduate, but and then E three once we graduate A school. Like, no, it's, it it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, so you're gonna do that. And you're just gonna practice for graduation. You're gonna receive your little care package. Put it in your friggin' seat bag. Don't open it. When you get your box back, don't friggin' open your box back and get your phone out. Don't friggin' do it. <coughs> Everybody in my friggin' compartment is friggin' doing it. Don't friggin' do it. You can wait. Been nine weeks without your phone. You can wait. Another freaking day. Literally the next morning. You can wait. It's not that important. I had over 300 freaking notifications on my phone. Guess what? I waited. Wasn't that big of a deal. At A school, I still barely even used my phone. Probably This is probably the most I've used my phone is doing this video. And this video is 33 minutes long right now. <laughs> I use it pretty, pretty good, honestly. Care package to tell you not to open. At A school, for almost the third day now. It's been over a week since I received this. Still haven't opened it yet. At the airport, they're going to give you another care package once you arrive. Everybody's going to applaud you when you get off the bus. They're going to be taking videos of you. It's crazy. If Girl Scout's going to be there, they're going to give you cookies and shit. I've barely good. even gone through this. i got headphones out. That was it. No headphones while you're in uniform. Don't do it. Uniform regulations. Mm -hmm. But they're going to teach you all that. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to end with this. The best thing that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Yeah, it was. It was really good. If you want it, you're going to freaking fight for it. No matter how many times you fail, you're going to get back up and you're going to keep pushing because your mindset is, this is going to be mine one day. I'm going to earn it. Yeah, the Navy uh, does not wish want you to fail. They will hold you back as many times as it takes in order to <coughs> pass. You know, they, they want you there. Hey, man. They're not going to just kick you out. The first half of boot camp is freaking folding clothes and doing buttons on your NWUs for inspections. Super freaking tedious. I hated it. I failed several times. Almost got set back several weeks. When you fail inspections, if you fail an inspection, the same one twice, you will get pushed back. What, a week? A week. A week, yeah. Don't freak out, man. Even if you do get set back, don't freaking quit. Like we had we had one of our yeomans that he thought he was going to get set back, and he said he was going to ask for separation. That's stupid. Why would you throw away 20-something years... For a freaking week. If you want it bad enough, you'll fight like hell for it. This is the best thing that will ever happen to you. I promise you. Let me uh, finish this off with uh, one guy who did not want it. 
It was, uh, it was this one guy, one of my rack mate, uh, but compartment mates. He told us about. He uh, he was like whimpering on the plane. He was he was like, oh, I don't want to choose to do this. Oh, I didn't want to do it. So and he, he was doing that all throughout this first week. I'm sorry, it's, you made the best decision of your life. Mm, nah. So what happened was, <laughs> so you know, he he couldn't handle what he did. He stuck his arm in his uh, rack. He slammed the top the the door right on top of it and broke his his own arm Rock just so he could off. go home. Yeah, so he he got put into separations. So he got kicked out. Well, that's illegal. Yeah. For what? That's UCMJ self harm yep, to get out of service. Yeah. yeah, he violated the UCMJ. Oh my gosh! He had to go to captain's mask and stuff. They just kicked him right out of the navy. He's uh. Like he didn't go to jail. He is like he didn't go to jail. But like in his like official thing, now he has to put down that. I think he's, it, it's, it's, like, it's like desertion. It's not, it's not a dishonorable. I don't think it was a dishonorable discharge. It's other than dishonorable. Yeah, it was other, other than it's, dishonorable. It's, like an, it's in the category of general discharge. Yeah, but I believe now, whenever they ask if you had military service, yes, but yes, and explain why you got he was discharged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Explain why you got discharged. That's not really good. Yeah. No, don't be that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> so many people have done boot camp before you. So many people have struggled and failed before you. You're not the only one that's going to struggle. You're not the only one that's going to fail. I struggled. I struggled a lot. I never thought I'd ever pass boot camp. I was literally the worst one in my division. One of the worst ones of that. I'm a sailor in the United States Navy. Mm. If I can do it, you can do it. Best decision of my life. Mm. Mine too. Glad I joined. I haven't, haven't had a downing thought so far. So it's, it's a weird feeling too. And, and the feeling, honestly, the feeling of being a sailor sinks in the airport a little bit after battle stations when you get capped and all that mainly at the airport when you see what's waiting for you yeah for sure that's my opinion Mm -hmm. but that's it any questions you can leave in the comments i'll try and answer but thank y'all for watching this extremely long video if you still if you're still watching it but any uh last remarks not really i mean just <laughs> listen, listen, listen to what your RDCs say. Let them finish uh, their instruction before you start doing anything. Our division had a problem with that. They would start saying something, people would start jumping, you listen. know, start doing things. Listen. listen, let them finish. You know, don't start doing things because then you're going to do it wrong and then you're going to get yelled at, you know, because everything is inspectable. You mess up like a stencil or something, they can hit that. Teamwork. It's team, all teamwork. No makes, individuals. Teamwork makes the dream work, you know. If you're individuals, you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, there's no individuals in boot camp. You're you are one. You are one, one team, one fight, one everything. Even those in like brother dis and all that thing. You help everyone out. I know boot camp is supposed to be like competitive with other, other divisions, and you're gonna find people that you like. You're gonna find people that you can't stand. There was a couple that I, I I could not stand. That like I I would even have, trouble just being around. Mm-hmm. Look at their shirt. What does their shirt say? United States Navy. They're still on your team and they're still your brother at the end of the day. So you need to work out your differences and you need to accomplish the mission. The mission comes first. Because even with being on a ship, if something's going wrong, ship, shipmate, self, you always come last. Don't give up the ship. Mm-mm. Never give up the ship. But leave with that. Yeah. Any questions? Leave it in the comments and we'll answer it the best we can. But yeah, next video will be covering A school. Just got here, so we're gonna try and get a little settled in.